Hello, my quilting friends. My name is Leah Day, and welcome to podcast number 101. And today I am chatting with Luann Fisher. She is a blogger, but what we're going to be talking about is actually not necessarily quilting. It's really about something that can take us away from quilting, and that is video games. And this was something I shared about at the beginning of the year. I shared my uh, word of the year, and I also talked about how Video games have become a problem for me a couple years ago, and this year I decided to stop playing video games completely, that I did not want to spend my time in a virtual reality. And that really helped Luann out a lot. She had been feeling the same way, but something about that podcast gave her permission to completely quit at cold turkey. And uh, so we're going to be talking about that today and just how Video games are very different than they used to be, and uh, they are actually engineered to be very addicted. And I'm talking about the video games that you can get on your cell phone, the video games you can put on a tablet. That style of video game is, it's a big business. It's a multi-billion dollar business, number one. And they're using the same data learning that casinos use to hook people, to bring you in, to make you want that fix every single day. And it's happening. I got hooked. There were mm, two years there really that I, I just lost. I lost those two years. I didn't produce anything. I didn't make much of anything uh, except for the absolute bare minimum that I needed to get done for the business. And that was it because I was hooked on a video game. And I can tell you straight up just how uh, awful it is. And it makes me furious. <laughs> Now, and you know, once I got free of it, it makes me absolutely furious that I wasted so much time playing a stupid, silly video game and putting money and time and all of that stuff into a virtual reality. But, you know, I needed that experience. And by sharing this and Luann being willing to come on the show and share about it, I think that hopefully we will help other people become free too. Because ultimately, as creatives, the whole point of you know making things is to make them and to enjoy that sense of creation and not necessarily like we have to be finishing so much stuff but just having that time to be and to sit still and to revel in our creativity video games are hijacking that and it can it can get really easy to feel like we're being productive and feel like we're getting a lot done when we're actually not so I really hope that you enjoy this podcast episode. I know it's a little bit negative, but I promise you, you will get some really, really positive messages out of this. And I love talking to Luann. She's a super, super upbeat lady and very creative. So I hope that you're excited about this episode and learning more about this topic from Luann. Now, I always share a little introduction about what's going on around the house first. Uh, so you can fast forward and jump up to a timestamp I will put below this video so you can get straight to the interview with Luann or you could hang out with me on the couch as I sit here and do some hand stitching and share what has been going on this week. So what am I hand stitching? I have finished up all of my hand applique on the goddess quilt that I was working on, Eye of Calm. I have yet to get to the next step with her. I'm really taking my time thinking about the quilting design that I wanna do. So she's kind of in a pause state right now. So I am going back to a goddess quilt that I started in 2013. I have a lot of these. It is Express Your Love. I made a whole mess of quilts basically that year, never finished them. And this one, the reason I did not finish it, and I can tell you exactly why, is because I designed it with itsy bitsy tiny hexagons with English paper piecing. And I got her face done. It's here in a plastic baggie. You can see her face was done with uh, quarter inch hexagons with English paper piecing. That took forever and a day. And then I got to that point and was just like, all right, I gotta set this down. I gotta go have a life. <laughs> You know, I got addicted to the video game after I made the face and then, you know, kind of set the whole thing down. Uh, and so I am picking this back up again. I've kind of like puttered around on this project on and off over the years, but I really would like to get more of those goddesses done for this book. Uh, I'm working on the goddess quilt book and that has been going well, but very slowly. And um, it's interesting just to go back to these older quilts that I absolutely love, but you know, it is definitely kind of um, 
you know, some of these quilts are very heavy. Some of these quilts are very dark and, um, and sometimes they're making me cry. <laughs> I'll be completely honest. And this week, um, I got a little sad and I had to just kind of, uh, pull back on a story a little bit and check in and make sure, you know, I don't, I don't want to make this book depressing, you know, for anybody. And I certainly want each quilt to have a positive message, but some of these are slightly more on the dark side and uh, I'm learning how to temper that and then also stay balanced myself so I don't get sad. Um, it has been kind of rainy weather today and this week, so that's maybe contributing to it a little bit. Um, but I realized that I really wanted to pull more from my blog, the Free Motion Quilting Project for this book. And I'm pulling posts, like parts and bits and pieces of posts. I'm pulling comments because I honestly, um, it's just such a joy to go back and read what somebody posted and wrote to me back in 2010, 2011. And the support of so many quilters it, it really did change so much for me. It made me feel less alone. You know, when I was sharing, you know, the quilt that I'm working on right now is Shadow Self. When I was sharing that journey of making that quilt, uh, I was 26, 27 years old. Actually, yeah, I was 26 years old. Uh, I had a three-year-old. <laughs> it's just, it seems so long ago. Um, but, you know, receiving so many amazing positive comments and so much support really did help me through that time. And I want that to go in the book. Um, so today I kind of took a break from writing and just focused on the Free Motion Quilting Project. And then, of course, that was a whole rabbit hole because uh, once I started fiddling and editing and playing around there, then I started realizing um, just how much cleanup needs to be happening there. Uh, I, I switched up the blog. I moved my blog from Blogger to WordPress uh, in the last year. And things are, you know, it works. It's, it's okay, but it's not terrific. It's not great. So I need to do a lot of maintenance on that and start cleaning it up. And I think I'm going to get Josh's help. Uh, you know, just making sure that there's a featured image on the post, you know, cleaning up and adding some images where I didn't post an image because back in 2010, uh, I didn't have a cell phone and I shot terrible, terrible photos with a horrible little camera that I had at the time. And so I didn't shoot very many photos because I didn't feel confident enough to do it. Um, so it's, it's going back in and putting more photos in and, you know, where, you know, something became a DVD and then it became a class, making sure that that's linked up properly and things like that. But, you know, it's easy to get distracted when I'm, I'm just going to go check on, you know, posts about the goddess quilts. And then I get distracted with this whole other tangent. And, you know, I'll be honest, you know, there's just so many times that I feel like, um, it's it's easy to keep putting this off. And, I, and I've said that many, many times. It's easy to put it off because it's hard and there's a lot of work that's gonna go into this. And I've gotta just keep working at it. And even if that's just an hour or two a day, then that's progress. And speaking of which, I did get a, a little app for my phone. It's called A Tracker, uh, just the letter A, Tracker. And it's really cool because you can set up and track what you are doing with your time every day. And I love this. Um, I'm able to create different tasks that I do, such as, you know, eating and cooking and shopping and working the business. I just call that business management and then filming videos and then working on the goddess book. And so I know exactly how many hours I'm putting into the goddess book every day. And I can also set countdown. So if I make myself exercise for 30 minutes a day, then that counts down and it'll give me an alert when I'm done, <laughs> which I love that. Uh, so yeah, I really in, am enjoying that app and that's letting me know where my time is going. And that's been really, really useful. So of course you've probably noticed the hat. I finished this one up last week and, you know, honestly, that tracking, being able to track my time really made me a lot more efficient in this past week with my personal time. And that's when I made my Easter hats. This was the one I was working on last week. I think that came out just absolutely gorgeous. And it was just a hot glue gun project. I took the fake flowers, ripped them off the stems, hot glued them down. And yeah, I'm really delighted with them. I've got a purple and a 
blue and a red and it looks like my big giant flower from my red hat popped off. I will need to glue that back down again. That is the one downside when you have really big flowers like this one and they have a really big plastic base. Sometimes that plastic base will pop off of the flower itself. So a little bit more hot glue will not be hard to fix that. But yeah, I had so much fun. And this one I love because it's got these spriggy things <laughs> sticking out of it. <laughs> I think that's cool. Okay, a couple other things that I've been working on this week. This is very special quilting. Very first project that I did on my Q-Zone hoop frame. And this is a cute little frame. I have put a home machine on it. I put my Juki uh, F600 on it, which I haven't been using that machine in um, over a year. And this has been really neat. Now you can see that I have this, you know, line stitched. I basically kind of a line that's about five inches wide. That's how much space I have to quilt in and you know by the length of the frame so if I had made this had set this out this way I would have been able to quilt a longer piece but I do have only that narrow space to quilt in and I find that really interesting a lot of people have been interested in the Q-Zone frame and that's why I decided to pick one up and um, start shooting some videos on it and I'll have the first video out on how to construct it how to build it and then some very basic stitching that I did for this little quilt and that will be coming out on Friday. Uh, I had a really good time with this. I would say that a frame like this is, it is kind of like a stair step. If you're curious about quilting on a frame, if you're curious about moving the machine over the quilt instead of the quilt under the needle, then it's definitely gonna give you the, that experience and you're gonna be able to see how that goes. Um, now the limitation is the size of the machine. I've got that whole machine on the frame it's limiting how much space I have to quilt in. My eventual plan is to move my 14 plus a long arm onto this frame so I have more space to quilt in and get maybe a slightly bigger long arm for downstairs. <laughs> but this is the thing guys, and this is, you know, and this is the case with all quilting I feel like, is it's always changing and evolving. You know, you try something and it's like, oh man, you know, I like this. I like moving the machine over the quilt. It does feel faster. But then I really wish I had more space to quilt in. I really wish I could do a little bit more here. And then it's okay, a bigger machine and then a bigger frame. And I mean, it does go from there and it does seem to kind of ratchet up a notch, but you've got to look at what kind of quilts you want to make and how you want to make them. For me personally, this Q-Zone frame, I emptied an entire whole machine bobbin on this sandwich in about 30 to 45 minutes. I haven't done that, and I know I couldn't do that if I was pushing the quilt by hand uh, because it would have taken that much longer. You don't realize how much time you lose from just pushing and manipulating the quilt underneath the machine. So I found that really interesting, and I'm personally gonna be using my Q-Zone frame for art quilts. I had more control on this frame, possibly because I was setting down and, and moving it. I set mine up as a set down and I'm still moving the machine over the frame. Uh, and I was able to stitch densely. I was able to echo nicely and travel stitching. Not as, you know, I was not as bad as it, at it as I am downstairs on my big long arm. So I think it's a control thing. And I think the more practice I do, the better I'll get. Uh, but I'm intrigued to do some little mini art quilts. I've been thinking about this a lot and I've been wanting to get back into the dense stitching, but on a small scale. And I, you know, this has been something kind of a, a direction that's been nudging at me, kind of saying, hey, hey, can you, can you do this again? And I wanna follow that inspiration and see where it goes. Uh, and speaking of inspiration, we have now the Dream big panels at leahday.com. You can come and check them out at leahday.com slash dream big. This is a really popular panel and it was designed, it's printed by Hoffman, designed by Jeannie Summerall Alero. And yeah, they comes in lots of different colors. We are just carrying the Aurora for right now. And I'm just intrigued to see what you guys think. If you wanna try them out, they're lots of fun. There's lots of different quilt alongs and stuff that are already posted by different people online. If you guys would like a dream big quilt along, let me know. We can organize something and have some fun with it. So if you wanna come and check this out, you can find that at leahday.com slash dream big. And I just 
Now I just decided to try it out. We got one bolt and uh, I don't know exactly how many panels that's gonna make, but we'll try and keep them in stock so you guys can enjoy playing with that. And then Miss Bunny came in. This is the Miss Bunny cut and sew fabric. And this is with Spoonflower. So you'll go and find this on spoonflower.com. It is not available quite yet. Still some adjustments that need to be made. Uh, some of the dots came out too dark, uh, sorry, too light, which means that you probably would miss them. And you really need certain dots, like the dot around her nose and uh, the dots on her back and, and you know the darts and stuff like that. They need to be darkened up. The um, instructions came out good, but I feel like that needs editing. So this is me being just a little bit on the persnickety side, yes, but I want you to have a really good experience making Miss Bunny. So yeah, I'm, I, you know, I like showing the progress of something and this has been in production now for three or four weeks, you know, actually longer than that, three or four months because turning this from a pattern to a flat cut out fabric is a very different thing and it was a learning curve certainly on things like um, getting her back and the dress flattened out all the different pieces that I needed and then figuring out how to get the nice you know fabric print to show up to and I really like it she's got you know the pink dress and then I decided to do white underwear <laughs> her panties with pink flowers I think that'll be really nice and then I'm just going to do a brown bunny for this one and then I might mix it up and do uh, maybe an Easter bunny with uh, in white or uh, you know darker colors I might change it up and do a purple miss bunny I don't know I just want to kind of play around with it I need to get this this basic template solid and know that all of the colors are coming out right and the dots and the darts and all those lines are lining up really well and, and showing up really well. And then I can go from there and really start to play. And I have plans and I've already started drawing Miss Bunny covered in feathers that I didn't really like the one that we're, you know, I was drawing one last week where um, she was kind of crazy. She had lots of different filler designs all over her, kind of a mishmash. I didn't like that. So I just decided to pull back and say, what am I in the mood for? I'm in the mood for feathers. So I just covered her completely with feathers and it was absolutely gorgeous. So that is pretty much it for the news around the house. I am continuing to work a bit every day on the goddess quilt book. That is my focus. And I'm really enjoying that. I am trying not to rush this process because it is a process and I need to take my time. And uh, you know, really helpful thing that a friend of mine said is, you know, you know, she just had a comment. She was like, you know, every time that you work on something, you seem to be rushing off so you can do something else. And in this case, I was feeling this need to rush so I could get to Mally the Maker book too. And she said, you know, what if you just didn't even think about that book, you know, as the next step? What if you just focused on this and enjoyed creating this, and really? gave yourself the time to do it without feeling frazzled and pushed and crazy and all that kind of stuff. And that was really, really good advice. So that's what I'm taking. And I'm gonna enjoy taking my time on this project, giving my heart enough time to kind of feel what it needs to feel and work through it. And then I have to say, I don't think I could have written this book even five years ago because I really didn't have the support network that I have now. And that is, extremely helpful. So a super big thank you to Katie and Anne. You both know who you are and you both listen to the podcast. So I'm just saying thank you, thank you, thank you for being so supportive and helpful um, just to be able to say, you know, this is hard or this is tough. Or this is going slow or it's driving me crazy, all that kind of stuff. It's nice to be able to share it. It's nice to have a, a cheerleading squad <laughs> is what it sometimes feels like. And that's honestly on this book, something that I need. Uh, so that is pretty much it for the updates around the house. A super thank you to our new members of the Quilt Friends Club, Alice McFarlane, Jody Marcellus, Sastra Thorne, Viporo, Sally Speckman, Melody Namon, and Jada Richer. Thank you guys so much for joining the Quilt Friends Club. This is a membership only group. It helps support the podcasts and all of the free tutorials that I put online. 
and it's basically a place where you can share photos, you can make friends from around the world, and you can participate in the How Do I Quilt This series. Uh, basically, you can post a picture of a quilt that you need help quilting, and then once a month, I take those images, I download them, print them out three times, and I share three different quilting design ideas. And this month, for the month of April, I'm gonna be sharing also the design process and kind of the behind the scenes of designing the quilting design for my latest goddess quilt. So that is gonna be included in that video this month. And if you'd like to come and check that out and you'll see the three other videos I've shared in that series, you can learn more at quiltfriends.club. And now here is the show with Luann Fisher about overcoming video game addiction so we can be our most creative selves. Hello, my quilting friends. Today I am here with Luann Fisher. Welcome to the show, Luann. Well, thank you for having me. So a little introduction, Luann Fisher blogs at Let's Create Today and was a program coordinator for the Palmetto Fiber Arts Guild for two years. She is this year's coordinator of the Cobblestone Quilt Guild's Block of the Month program. She has a long arm machine that gets a workout as she puts together the sandwiches for several charity groups. She is always on the lookout for her next challenge, whether it is designing a quilt for one of her family members or learning how to draw via DVD instruction from a university professor. There is no creative area that is off limits to her and she does admit that she has left the culinary areas to her more than capable husband, George. I love that. <laughs> me. Yeah, I've had, to, I've had to start watching just how much I enjoy his food. <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful. And it sounds like that's such a nice balance between the two of you. You get your chance to create and make, and he gets to cook you dinner. And I think that's awesome. And he loves cooking. Uh, a lot of people can't understand why I don't relieve him in the kitchen. And I do. I do the dishes. Exactly. That is perfect. It works. And he, he enjoys putting things together and coming up with new recipes. And he's come up with some recipes that I'll have an input in because I have a little bit different way that I've been eating for the last year. And when you change your focus from being on a lot of carbs to other areas, it, it makes an impact. Um, I grew up in potato country. We <laughs> raised potatoes. That was a hard thing for me to pull back on. I have not given up any food that I want to eat. I just watch how much of anything that are on those high carb areas and it's, it's been working. Excellent. Excellent. So what we're going to talk about today, I'm super excited about this. We're going to be talking about video game addiction. And I know this is kind of a weighty subject and might be something that a lot of people are not really aware of. Um, but I started working on this myself and then you reached out to me and we started chatting about it and stuff and emailing back and forth. So why don't we just start with, your experience with this and how it kind of slipped up on you. And then I'm going to share mine and we can just kind of share okay. and go from there. Well, I'd really like to preempt the whole thing with many years back when I lived in Green Bay, Wisconsin, I realized that I was actually addicted to gambling. Oh. Um, and that's a thing that a lot of people go, oh, you, you know, you're, you, you're just going for entertainment. And honestly, it probably was because whatever money I took, that was the money I came home without. I didn't lose a lot of money. If I had a $50 a month that I could spend, I, it wouldn't matter how much I won. I came home low, less $50. That was just where I went with it. I finally came to grips with the why I was going. And that had to do with my husband traveling a lot. And I was like at a loss. And once I really actually came clean, I'll say, with it and actually told him I couldn't promise I'd never go gambling again, but I promised him if I ever did, I would tell him immediately. I mean, not like call him up from the casino, but I would tell him right away. That put a stop to it. All of a sudden, it just took it off that board of I can't to I'd really rather not. And yeah. he never gave me a grief about it, just said, I really wish you weren't. That was it. And like I say, I didn't lose a lot of money. I was very fortunate, very fortunate on that end. But having done that when I was back in Green Bay, probably, oh, seven years ago, once I moved to South Carolina five years ago, um, I was really at a loss. I didn't know people, you know, and as you age, 
and you move to a new community, unless you move into a senior community, uh, making friends can be a difficult thing. So you kind of gravitate towards those, as someone said just recently, default things, default activities. You don't even realize it. And that's where I, I was. And I realized during last year that I really wanted to stop spending the amount of time. Uh, and I shouldn't say spending. I'm going to say it right up. It was wasting. It was wasting my time. And I decided it was, you either waste your time, you spend your time, or you invest your time. And I, I decided I was not going to waste my time anymore. I was either going to spend it wisely or invest it in whatever. But it wasn't going to go into truly trash stuff for me. Now, I'm not going to give anybody else a hard time about what they're doing, but it would be really wise to really take a look at why. Why are you playing those games? Most of the time, I think you get sucked in, like yeah. you said. And it's out of boredom. Uh, it can be out of overwhelm. When you've got too many projects sitting there and you don't know which one to do, I'll just go play a video game for a little while and kind of let my head clear. The only thing is, video games, just the same as a casino machine, they have, and even if you turn the noise off totally, but the noises, if you listen to them, are addictive. And the way things come up and the, the light sensations in there, I mean, if people would only understand that people are making mega dollars on making video games that suck people in, that that's where they're making their income. I mean, I understand they're trying to produce an income. Um, there's a whole lot of other places that that creative thing could be spent. But I realized back in November specifically, when I was starting to put together my goals for the upcoming year, I was like, you know, I've accomplished a lot last year. And I really, I really did. But, you know, if I took all of the time, even just an hour a day more, you know, that's 365 hours. You divide that up by 40 hours a week. That's nine weeks of working <laughs> full time somewhere. You know, that's a lot of time. Yeah. And I mean, that my thought was, yeah, I'm, I'm going to walk away. I started out with just putting down, I would walk away from video games for 31 days. There was some other things that I'm, you know, I'm going to write a letter to other people for 28 days. I picked February because I figured it, you know, it didn't happen. It's okay. Someday, it, you know, I still contact people. Just don't, don't write letters like I had thought I would. But by the time that I got to December 31st, I had altered my, my desire. And it was going to be no playing video games for 31 days until after six o'clock at night. Oh, well, that sounded really good. You know, I, I, I compensated. Okay, I can do it, but I can't do it until after six o'clock. Well, I realized when I saw your podcast, I think it was on the 3rd of January, and you just in passing made the comment kind of that you felt you had been wasting some time doing video games. You did them kind of with your little boy. And, and that's, I mean, it is fun to do fun things with your kids but when like you said all of a sudden you realized but what am i really doing you know and that one really just that night i did not watch i mean i did not play any video games i have not played another video game i have never quit anything cold turkey in my life wow and but that one but you know i just it's like i just knew i needed to i knew that it was time and leah I can give you numbers as to what I accomplished in the last three months as compared to my entire year last year. It, it's wow. amazing. I put on more stitches on my long arm machine in three months than I did the whole of last year. I've, um, I mean, I took on projects that I never thought I would. I mean, actually, I took on being the block of the month coordinator for the, the in January. I talked to the president on a Monday. And on Thursday night, I had the whole program put together because, wow. <laughs> well, because I wasn't wasting any time. I mean, all that time that I would have otherwise spent here or there, here or there, popping on a video game, seeing if I could get my, you know, your, your level higher. You know, it's like, what am I, you know, and I, I'm just amazed that really, I'm, I'm amazing myself, I guess. <laughs>
Yeah, yeah. And let me, I, I just want to back up for just a second and explain something here, guys, because I was raised with video games. I mean, playing an NES, playing my, I got it, I was given a Game Boy when I was in fourth grade and I had a two and a half hour bus ride. So it was, it was a relief to have something to play and do on the bus. Um, but I gamed a lot. And that was something that brought my husband and I together because we both gamed and we both liked the same games. And so, you know, our first, you know, when we were dating, we were playing Zelda together and stuff like that. So that has been part of my DNA growing up. But I think what a lot of people don't understand is that these iPad and iPhone video games, the tablet style video games are entirely new and very, very different. They are actually engineered to be addictive. They have actually pulled in casinos and paid them, uh, you know, uh, kind of consulting fees in order to tell them how to make things more addictive. Uh, and the idea is, you know, if you're like Candy Crush is a great example of this, that video game, I think it starts out, you know, it's like a free video game app, you download it, but then they start charging you for little tokens and little gizmos and little things that allow you to continue playing the game. So like you get to a certain number of levels, you've got to start paying. I got addicted to a video game a couple of years ago that it was Mar Marvel Future Fight. It's so stupid that this video game addicted me, but how it worked was it actually could play itself. And I know that sounds insane, but that means that I could multitask with it. I could set it up at my sewing machine and have it playing while I quilted. So it felt like I was like, working on that and I was quilting at the same time. So it was like, I was relaxing, but I was also working and that hooked me so badly. And those years that I was addicted to that game, I didn't get anything done. I mean, I got the bare minimum because what that did was it fractured my attention span. So I would be quilting, but then something would happen with the game. So I'd stop and go play with the game. And then I go back to quilting and then the, something would happen with the game. And it was like herky jerky constantly. And I had to, I had to cold turkey that. I really did. And it, it snuck up on me so slowly. It hooked me so badly. And it was like a daily check in so that you, every day that you check in, you get like extra energy points and extra this and extra that. And then they'd have special events where it's like, oh, you get extra this and extra that. It was awful because that pulling you in then makes you feel bad when you don't go and check in. And not you have neglected a friend. Exactly. Exactly. It was like, Oh, I, I, I didn't check in. I didn't get my thing. And it took, honestly, what pulled me out of it finally was dad had started working for us and he was coming into work. Like, what do you want me to do? And I was still playing the stupid game and I kind of like, I don't have anything for you because I was supposed to be working and getting the next plan ready. And I wasn't, you know, and so it became so obvious that I wasn't getting my job done. And then on one day I, I forgot to play the game. And then I lost all of that. It, it was like this extreme dreadful sense of loss. Like, oh man, it's all ruined. It's all messed up, you know, and this, you know, it just, it was this big giant shame spiral. And then I was like, wait a minute, this is a freaking video game. <laughs> this yeah. is a video game. And that finally was enough to pull me out of it. And that's when I quit and I quit cold turkey too. And what I was talking about, I, I had still kind of played like little video games here and there, like Switch and stuff. And I kind of really gotten into a new Zelda game that I was playing with James and stuff. And what I was talking about in January was just how playing by myself, especially that needed to end because I did not want to invest any more time in a virtual reality. And that's what video games are. They are very addictive, fake, worlds and that means nothing you know so why don't you tell everybody what you got done in the last month or two after you quit video games cold turkey all righty well i started out um the year with 45 because i count them up and i keep track of stuff i had 45 unfinished projects in various levels of of getting done and I've finished four of those. Excellent. I've added 17 more that all <laughs> the 17 I've added are not just thoughts. They are actually projects that have gotten substantial work done on them. Uh, like my quilt back yeah. here. Yeah, yeah beautiful um, tree quilt. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and, and uh, of the 17 I added, six of those are already finished. Excellent. So, I mean, I, you know, just right there, 
my lifetime, well, my stitches on my long arm machine, I put on uh, under, well, 1,300, what, 1,389,887 last year. I have one of those lifetime stitch counters, which is cool. I love that. Um, that was the whole year last year. In three months, 1,454,970, I mean, 1, 454. <laughs> you can tell I can't read that million thing. <laughs> Well, it's just jogging your brain, right? <laughs> I have put on more stitches with my long arm machine than I did, you know, all of last year. Yeah. Okay, last year I quilted 12 quilts for our guild charities. I've already quilted 35 this year. Wow. People where they make, you know, the top and the back and, and the, the batting. Sometimes I have it, sometimes my one friend brings it over. But 35 have already been finished. Wow. So um, I read a lot of books last year, and I, if I would keep on at the rate I'm going right now, I will more than triple the amount of books. I don't know if there's that many interesting ones to me right now. <laughs> I always kind of laugh. I always say, I don't need to read any kind of a drama or, um, let's see, fiction, right? Those are the not truth, because I got crazy stuff in my cul-de-sac. You know, I just watch the neighbors. You don't need, I don't need to read a book. I just watch my neighbors on occasion. <laughs> Um, I've already given seven quilts away this year that I've made, and I only did 19 last year. Um, let's see. I also, during this year, during the month of February, that was why we couldn't do our chat any earlier, we did a renovation in our house. We had contractors in and out, started at the very end of January, went through the third week of February, and literally every day there was somebody in, somebody out, and no matter how much you want to sew or whatever, it's you kind of have to wait for them to get here in the morning and then get done and gone. By that time, you're kind of halfway through your day. And that's where a lot of book reading came in. <laughs> but I've also, in March then, I attended four days at a beach retreat that our guild sponsors. And I went up to Columbia, South Carolina to a workshop. For, and a, we went up on Friday and the workshop was on Saturday. And, and we have visited countless places down here. You know, we do that a lot because it's a new, we probably always will. There's just so much to see in the Charleston, South Carolina area. So yeah, yeah you're right there near Savannah. It's an awesome area to be in. It really, really is. Yeah. Oh, it sounds like you have just gotten so much more done. Um, but here's the thing that I think is kind of the the pressure that can come in whenever you quit something and then start saying oh i'm going to get so much more done is that pressure to be on and go 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 so i would like to know how are you relaxing now if if video games were how you relaxed before how do you relax now i listen to podcasts <laughs> can't i bet you can't guess who one of my people is. <laughs> but i read more i truly you know and and well, like this morning while I was waiting for our time together, I cut out 200 clamshells out of hand-dyed fabrics uh, with an AccuQuilt Go, mind you. I didn't cut them out, cut them out. I ripped, put them through. <laughs> but those are going to my, my quilt guild. And I've been working on a new project that I think it was your podcast in 98 said, don't fear doing the something that's been inside of you. And I've been working on that project. And... <laughs> It's coming along, and uh, once I finally just decided, you know what, if it doesn't turn out, it doesn't even matter. I just really want to work on it. I want to take it from the thought, like, oh, I ought to, or I want to, well, do I, you know, all that crazy thought process going on, to just really having the solid thing. And if I end up at some point saying, you know, I don't really want to do this any further. This is as far as I want to go with it. That's okay. Um, when I was younger, there was a lot of pressure to everything you did creatively, you needed to monetize it. You know, and I think that that has a lot to do with, um, well, when I was younger, we had to, you know, feed our children, <laughs> you know, and so you do it that way. But I always said, I mean, I've had a lot of people ask if I would make quilts, and I always say this, when I get a quilt done, if you like it, let me know and I'll tell you how much it would be. Most of the time, if they tell me they really like it, they're probably just going to get it. Now, that probably is not a good thing to put on the podcast, but it's okay. 
But one one gentleman that was here that was one of our contractors asked, how much does a quilt cost? And I looked at him and I said, do you think that my time is as valuable as your time? And, you know, that, you know, a lot of them don't really think that way, but they will not say that. And he went, well, yeah. I said, okay, just supposing you're making 25 an hour. Yeah. I, and then I just I said, you can't afford it. <laughs> just yeah, like, you can't afford it. You know, the only way I'm going to get one is if I decide to gift one to you because you have a family to feed and bills to pay. And even though you would love to have a quilt to give to your wife as a gift when you get into a new home, very honestly, you've got you got a new hot water heater to make sure you can afford. I mean, there are things in your life that are a lot more important than having a quilt that I've made. I said, you know, uh, so we'll see what happens at Christmas time for them. You know, we'll see. Yeah, yeah. And I feel the exact same way. Um, you know, I've, I wear a quilted jacket. And so often, you know, if I go to yoga or something, the yoga ladies will be like, oh, that's such a beautiful quilted jacket. You know, would you make one for me? And, I, you know, it's kind of like, well, do you want to really pay $30,000 for a jacket? Because that would probably actually be the low end of what I would charge because it's that much time and so much hand finishing goes into those jackets and so much yeah. time goes into the fitting and making sure it is going to look good and all that good stuff that there is no way I could possibly make that. And I mean, they're thinking maybe $300, you know, a high end upscale boutique in my tiny little town, you know, and I'm just like, no, I, I couldn't possibly. There's no way, uh, but I love hearing that you're reading more and I love hearing that you're finding other methods and other ways of relaxing. And I think that's really the key. I've been reading a lot more too and um, spending more time in nature, like getting outside and doing stuff you know, with my family. We go to our land, go on a hike, uh, James and I have bicycles now, so we'll bike to the grocery store and get an ice cream and you know, enjoy that. <laughs> And it just feels like I'm, I'm spending more quality time mm -hmm. where we're actually together and making memories that will actually stick versus when I look back at those years that I was stuck in that video game, I don't remember anything other than playing like my face in a tablet. I don't remember anything. The thing is, is that like you say, the, the addictive part of those goes in and takes up the space in your brain. Every, yeah. every spot in your brain that's taken up by a video game's lights, bells, whistles, and pictures and that, every space that's taken up by that is no longer available for creative thought. So, you know, yeah. And I spend a lot of time on, when you say in nature, I spend a lot of time on our screen porch. I, and I have, we have rockers out there. And honestly, Leah, I have learned that it is really okay to sit in a rocking chair and rock, have a cup of tea and not have something to read, something to knit, something to crochet. It is okay to just sit and spend a little time with yourself. Yeah. Think. And if you don't want to think and you just want to watch the birds go by, or like I say, my neighbors, <laughs> <laughs> I see more just on the back side of my house. I really don't see my neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> but as good old fashioned porch sitting in, I love that because uh, that's actually been something I've been wanting to add to my house would be a front porch, nice, you know, screened in front porch to do exactly that, set in a rocker and just be, just be able to set and rock. And, you know, I think that we've lost the capacity to be bored, you know, and there's so much that comes from just sitting still and being kind of bored that, you know, when I was a little girl, we didn't actually have a television. Our television broke when I was in first grade and we didn't replace it. My parents just said, eh, it's a television. We can live without it. And we didn't have TV again until I was in sixth grade. So that five year span of no TV in the house, I look back on it and I think that that made the biggest difference in my life. It honestly did. Because instead of getting off the bus and going straight to the television, which had been our habit, that had already become a habit when I was a little girl, um, it became, all right, I got my homework done. What am I going to do now? And that was often I'd go pick up a craft project. I taught myself how to crochet. I you know, did some hand sewing back then and stuff like that. So I think that these hidden pockets and moments are ideal. And it's not like necessarily that we have to be getting so much done. That's the pressure I put on myself a lot. And Josh has been kind of working with me and helping me with that. He's like, you know, look, we used to relax to play video games together. Now you need to do something else. You need to relax, but you need to stop working all the time. And when you said that about monetization, it was like, oh yeah, that's me. I'll raise my hand. <laughs> well, you know, are, I mean, and that is our society. I mean, True. I, 
sure that you've probably run into this, that someone at some point when you were making a quilt, when you maybe weren't at the level you are now with your business, and they go, well, why are you making that? And the idea of making something simply because it needs to get out of inside of you, yeah. um, most people are very uncomfortable with that. I mean, when they hear you say, I made it just because, you know, yeah. we uh, many of the quilts I make, they go to uh, foster kid, children that are going to Royal Family Kids Camp this summer. Um, that's that's where a lot of them go, or to the Doors to Freedom House in um, Charleston. It's the only one in South Carolina, and it's meant for helping girls get out of, I mean, they bring girls out of the sex trafficking situations. And the real small girls go into special homes, but these are, I think, the 8 to 14-year-olds, somewhere in there, where they they are able to be in a, a group setting. But yeah. we need to know that people out, out here care. We can't really go there because the interaction with them isn't appropriate necessarily for them. They need time. But having something that when they leave, they take with them, you know, it's now theirs. It's like the foster children. Their quilts that they get when they go to camp, they take them home with them. Yeah. I mean, in that way, if something happens and hopefully if they go to a new foster home within that year, hopefully they would still have their quilt the following year. But if they don't, they get a new one. Yeah. That's and the way. At least have the memory of that quilt too. I mean, so much, I think quilts are so tactile and so special in the sense that, you know, here's this thing that I'm, I'm covered up with and it's making me warm. And then that memory of that, I think sticks with kids and, you know, even if it, it necessarily doesn't make an impact, then it might make an impact in, in 10 or 20 years. So I think that's wonderful. It, it touches their heart in a way that we'll maybe never see. Yeah. But their heart has been touched. And that's what the whole point is. It, that's why I call them always a comfort quilt. It, you know, people a lot of times when we collected quilts for Houston and Florida, when Irma and Hugo went, not Hugo, Irma and Harvey, when mm -hmm. they went through, we did a lot of quilts and we sent them down um, to quilters that we knew in the area that would get them out to the people. Um, and someone asked why I asked for 36 by 48 inch quilt tops. I said, because that quilt will be used to wrap around a small child. So we now have comforted two people, the child and the adult putting the quilt around them. Yes. You know, there's a lot to be said about that instead of just, and then when people say, well, people in Florida don't need quilts. You know what? Everybody needs a hug. Yes. That's what a quilt is. It's, it's a hug in fabric. <laughs> exactly. And, you know, and the things that, you know, sometimes I feel like we, when we're in a sense of loss, you know, like we, we lost something and sorry, losing a house and, and losing the, you know, all of your comforts and stuff. And just, even if it's something, you know, a new quilt is something that probably doesn't bring back memories, but you know, it is, it is exactly like that it is exactly like a hug. And I love that you're um, being able to spend more time making that. And I think, if that's exactly what you were talking about, either spend your time, invest your time or waste your time. And that sounds like such a great investment of your time. And, you know, if you want to look at it as an expense, then a great way to spend your time too, because you're getting something out of it and putting something into it and something great is coming out of that too. So I think that's wonderful. Um, so when we think about video games and, you know, this kind of addictive nature, how it pulls you in and sucks you in and stuff like that, um, are there other things that you think that we're doing maybe as Americans that we are wasting our time with other than video games? I feel like television by and large <laughs> is a waste of time and I don't watch any TV at all. Hardly. I, I watch so little that yeah. I you know, but, um, I remember back many years ago, I mean, many years ago, I remember hearing my sister talk to my mother about some people. And I was visiting at the time and I said, I don't, I don't think I know those people. Who are they? And oh, they're on, and they're telling me the soap opera they're on. They were talking about them as though I thought they were someone in our small community that I'd never met. And I thought, you guys are discussing soap <laughs> opera individuals. It's like, my goodness. I mean, Rocky and Bullwinkle are more <laughs> interesting, you know. <laughs> but, you know, the, another thing that I think happens, Leah, 
people don't realize this, this just happened recently, is too much chat time with people and you end up hearing the same story over and over and over and over from that same person. And um, there's nothing new going on in their life. You get to a point where you really kind of almost don't want to talk to them because it's like, isn't there something going on in your life to talk about? And I think that so many people are so focused on what they do at work and then what they do on a screen. Yeah. I, I mean, whether it's the iPad, the you know, their um, FaceTime or Facebook or any of these kind of things, it, it all becomes, well, who are you interacting with? Yeah. You know, and they say that you become like the five people you spend the most time with. Now, think about that. If you spend eight hours a day at work and you don't like your coworkers, that's I mean, do, go get a new job. But you still have plenty of hours. How are you spending those other hours? Are those other hours being spent? I mean, really, if I, I mean, your coworkers, that's kind of a, a, a situation where they're going to be there. They don't, you know, you're going to have an influence. They're going to have an influence. You got to watch what's going on. But when you look at if you spend two to three hours every night watching what you even yourself would refer to as junk. Well, yeah. I just, you know, I just watched junk. You are now basically one of your favorite friends is your iPad or your computer or yeah. your cell phone, you know? And it's like, I mean, you know, Facebook. Um, I just had a friend who's a business person and she got a notice that said she was, she, they weren't sure about the picture she put up. They were shutting her down and she's, she runs her business. A part of it. That, I mean, I've seen all of her posts that, oh my God. Yeah. It was just like strange, strange. Yeah. So you never know. And, um, just too much crazy going on out there. I think sometimes, but yeah. being involved in the crazy, and may, and internalizing it then that, you know, somebody goes on Facebook and they, you know, give off a rant about something. I often think, you know, if more people really would monitor their own uh, pages and delete people and delete things yeah. that they don't want on there. I mean, I was, I actually, and there probably is a privacy setting that says nobody can post anything to your thing unless you're okay it. I haven't found yeah. it. You know, and I just finally, a year ago, I ended up dropping practically all people off of Facebook. I let most of them know. And it was because of a situation that happened where I was starting to get these requests to be a friend from what I don't even really believe were real people. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. Where's no, it's, it's an issue. <laughs> it's an issue. Bots. I mean, they are fake accounts and, and like we were getting them joining our groups. And then they were ending up then promoting and, and they, they were spam bots. They were basically yeah. robot, like not real people designed to get in an infiltrated group and then be able to advertise to that group. It was ridiculous. Um, I love the concept though of thinking, and I don't know if you meant to say it this way, but thinking of Instagram like a friend, like, do I really want to spend time with that friend? That friend is really excessively chatty and has lots of pretty photos, but oh my gosh. You know, um, I, I, this friend makes me feel this need to compete with her. This friend makes me feel like I'm not good enough. You know, I get on Instagram and I feel this pressure to be posting, but I'm not getting anything out of it other than like, a, oh God, I got that off my back today. At least I don't feel guilty today, you know? And I've been working on that going, I don't really want to be doing this. I don't really want to be here. I don't really want to be spending time with that friend. And it's taken me a long time. I, I like we, we canceled our, our Facebook groups last year. We got away from that. I've been minimizing my Facebook time completely because that became a huge time suck too. And yeah. just try to get people to be nice to each other. I mean, it's simple, like human decency. That's it. Well, it's just I don't like what somebody says. Just, yeah. just, oh, just, just exactly. But I mean, ahead. it's, it's kind of like, do we even have to put this out there? We're just quilters. Like, let's just be talking about quilting. You know, and leave everything else at the door. And that was becoming so challenging that we could not even make that request without offending somebody. And finally, it was just like, I'm getting off of this. I still have my Facebook page only because my fear is if I even delete my Facebook page, then a bot will come in and take it over and then pretend to be me and yeah. can actually do that. So, it, you know, it's this giant catch 22 now where it's kind of like, 
you'll get stuck if you don't do it and then you'll get stuck if you do. And I like though this idea of thinking of these social media platforms even as as people and who are they? Like, what is their intrinsic? And I, I always associate Facebook with Zuckerberg and I do not like that guy. So it's like, I don't want to spend time with him. <laughs> so I like that visualization. I think that's going to be a key for helping me let go of my guilt about Instagram. If I don't enjoy it, why am I doing it? Why am I messing with it? And why am I making myself feel guilty about it? You know, if I don't want to post, I don't want to post there. Right. They are entities. Yeah. They are you know, we, maybe they aren't a human entity, but they are an entity and mm -hmm. they do have their own criteria and their own uh, direction of what they want to get out of you. Let's face it, that stuff is really not all put together for the betterment of humanity. Yeah. <laughs> it's you not. Know? It's, it's dollars and cents for these corporations. That's what it is. They want to make money. And I mean, that's fine. Make some money, but they're not making money off of good human interaction and good behaviors. If I get addicted to Instagram and spend an hour scrolling through the free feed, that is one hour that I am not working on my quilt, not spending with my husband, not spending with my son, you know, and then if I'm feeling guilty for not messing with it. Right. And not spending it with yourself, Leah. Sometimes exactly. we 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 really think we have to be that like you said a continuous go 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 and many of us have that kind of personality where we do like to be active and be doing things and and accomplishing in that my um let's create today blog spot i uh, one there was one month a couple of years back in on um, in may if you look there's like 30 posts up <laughs> and i post something every day for 30 days well I thought, you know, I've got to see if I can do that. Just, it was a challenge I took. I mean, I don't even know if somebody challenged me or I just thought it up, but so I did. And when I got done, I almost thought, okay, I'm done. I almost <laughs> like, oh, totally. And I, so, I mean, I've gone three months, four months with not posting, then I'll end up putting a whole batch of pictures up that says, this is what I've been doing over the last three months or four months. Yeah, I use my blog more that at the end of every year or two, I can print out a book. Yeah. Have, because I don't want to print all those pictures and then put them into scrapbooks. So, sure. I mean, so I, I truly have used the blogger platform for being able to be my journal. And, you know, I've met, I've met a few people that have commented and it's funny, the spam you get on that one and you go, are you really kidding me that you yeah, seriously. that one? I mean, I just like look at some of that. Like, you, you don't even, you haven't even read the blog and you're saying all these things that don't even pertain to my blog. It's like, okay, obviously spam. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And you got to watch out for all of that kind of stuff. But that's exactly what I use my blog for for years. And I like to actually get back to that because I have been going back through all of my posts and pulling the posts that I wrote about my goddesses. Uh, these are quotes that, you know, I like the one I was working on today was 10 years ago. I don't remember the details. I don't have a firm recollection of all the struggles that I went through and being able to go back to that story has been so valuable because I realized, wow, I was obsessing about the silliest things. I wasn't sleeping. I wrote multiple times how I wasn't sleeping during that time. And I totally have forgotten all of that. I've forgotten all of the habits that I had been messing up and all of the, the bad things. And so uh, being able to go back and see that you basically journal entries about that quilt has been so valuable. And I really want to get back to that kind of lately. I've been really blogging and it's been very much like, you know, here's a tutorial done. Here's a tutorial done. You know, and I, I just, it doesn't need to be anything long, but just a check in of saying, here's what I'm working on. The podcast does this a lot for me. It really, really does. But it's also nice to have that little bit of a photo and a little bit of text written that's, you know, in so much of the podcast is audio and it doesn't ever get translated into text or photos in any way. So, right. I, yeah, I work on that. And maybe I'll work on that instead of feeling guilty about Instagram. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Instagram, like any of them, you you don't want to miss. We have we have this thought that we're going to miss something. Yeah. Um, and when we finally accept the fact that, guess what? You are. You yeah. are going to miss things. I don't yeah. care if you spent all day, 24 hours a day on Instagram. Guess what? You're still going to miss some stuff. Because there's no way one human can take in all of what's available. 
So you kind of have to start make those cho- making those choices. How much am I willing to give up of my present to be looking at other people's present life? Yeah. And you know, let's face it, the only things people put up on Instagram or any of them, it's their best. Yeah. You, I mean, how many times I was on a, a journaling uh, group on Facebook and someone was saying, I don't think I can do this. I'm not, you know, I'm not this, I'm not that. Because everybody is putting out these giant spreads that are beautiful. Yeah. And they said, does anybody ever like scribble out stuff? Well, I took three pictures of the pages in my journal and put them on. I thought, you know what? I'm willing to be transparent. I just made sure they weren't anything, any pages that had people's <laughs> names. <laughs> they were clean. <laughs> you know? But I put them up so that, and I, I was amazed at how many responses I got to that saying, thank you. Yeah. It's, I, you know, it, we, we, we think we have to be at that 100% top level all the time. And that's not where we need to be. Yeah. 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 And it has, it has created this absolute um, over expectation of, of absolute gorgeousness every second of every day. It doesn't happen. This quilt hanging up behind me was my first version of a quilt that I got it done. I finished every single bit of it. It's leaf peepers. Yep. And then I said the brown is not going to work. I had to make it all over again because I said the brown's not going to work. So that's the process. But if we don't share the process, then the, the learning side of things doesn't have, it's not clear. We look like super women, you know, too. We look like we got it all figured out and there's no struggle and there's no difficulty. There's no messy middle. And that is, um, that is really a toxic idea. <laughs> Realistic. We're not living in a real world when we do that. And that's one thing I really have enjoyed about your podcast. You know, you just, you just are so real. <laughs> that's one of the things I think I have. And when I sent my first email back, I think that was back in December, even when I had said something to Josh about something and he had replied back. And I was like, that really meant a lot to me because it, you guys are real people. It's not yeah. like, you know, like, you know, like you're just faces on a video and somebody else is doing all your paperwork, you might say. Yeah, yeah, no, completely. I, I totally get that. And it's actually really funny when something happens, like let's say something happens with an order and there's just no no way around it. I've got to give somebody a call. I'll call somebody and they're like, oh my gosh, I cannot believe I'm talking to you. And my response is usually, well, who else would call you? <laughs> There's nobody else to call you. Josh doesn't like using the phone. So there's really nobody else to call you. It's just going to be me or if I can muscle him into it, maybe Josh will give you a call. But, you know, that's that's it. It's only the two of us. Then my dad does the, you know, behind the scenes work on the quilts and the fabric prep and that kind of stuff. Um, but that's it. And and I think that it's so good. And that's why I continue to do the podcast. We just celebrated day 100, or episode 100. And I, you know, this is why I keep doing it because when I did not have the podcast, it felt like people were running away with this impression that I was this amazing superwoman that never made a mistake and everything magically happened and that's not reality. And um, that, like I said, it's very unrealistic and I think it's a very toxic mindset of our current culture. And I think we need to get back and pull back away from that. Um, Just like getting addicted to a video game, I think it's very possible to get addicted to people's beautiful feeds and people's beautiful, like the beautiful picture of their lives. And it's not reality. We all have snotty noses. <laughs> we all have bad, ugly areas of our house that we don't want to show anybody. You know, we all have that too. Uh, so thank you so much for sharing all of this, Louie. Yeah, I- oh, yes, absolutely. One second. I want to show you what's behind your quilt. Okay. This is, uh, so the quilt that Luann is pulling down is uh, the Tree of Life quilt. She made the big one, and then she's going to pull down and show me something behind it. Yeah. And I love the colors that you put. She made the Tree of Life quilt with blue and green, a beautiful print. And, and they're both, it's a cool fabric quilt right now. I've never done that. So that was my challenge to only use two fabrics. I love it. It came out beautifully. And I love that you snuck in, she snuck in a little owl in one of the triangles. It's gorgeous. Oh my gosh, that's so beautiful. So this is a giant star in blue and orange. I'm just describing it for the audio for the podcast so everybody can understand what it is. And please come and see an image of this on the show notes uh, at freemotionproject.com. Uh, but it's a beautiful star quilt in blue and orange, kind of a teal it's, car- it's the Carpenter's Apprentice. 
is the Beautiful. name of the pattern. You know, so yes, it was the, the workshop I took up in, uh, that's where we started. And I got this much done. <laughs> yeah, that's one of those that there will be the, the notes about the learning curve on that because Absolutely. I've done, I've done quilts. I did my first quilt when I was eight years old. So I have done quilts for a lot of years. Yeah. And but this I, was still, I still have a challenge sometimes to get that quarter inch seam to really actually happen it yeah. and i know it's, it's every time it's a fabric a thread whatever sometimes i think it's the time of day when i'm trying to do it so anyhow i thought i'd show you that one too thank you so much for sharing that i absolutely love seeing your quilts and i loved having this conversation with you thank you so much for sharing it um why don't you tell everybody where they can find you online so they can come and follow your blog too Okay, it's let's L E T S create C R E A T E today dot blogspot dot com. Excellent. Well, thank you again for being on the show. I can't wait to see what you create next. Thank you for having me.